Hello. Hello, everybody. Hello. It's Tuesday night, and we are going to have a live show. Dog alert. Dog alert. <laughs> it's going to be a live show. And so if you're watching this at a later time, I will be interacting with the chat room and we'll be talking back and forth doing stuff and asking questions and things. So we'll be uh, interacting. So if you're watching this at a later time and you want to speed through the boring parts to get to the fun parts, I invite you to do so. Please do. We're going to have a full lineup today. <laughs> lots and lots to do. We're going to be sketching a sea turtle in a few minutes. And there's our sea turtle. In 10 easy steps of the sketching. And it's out of this 10 step drawing animals. Learn to draw 75 animals in 10 easy steps by Heather Kilgore. So we will be doing that in just a few moments. And I'm going to be doing it uh, in watercolor gouache color. Uh, type of watercolors. Hi, Nancy. <laughs> and uh, we will be, hopefully, we'll be doing a napkin journal page. I've got that on my list. And we are going to be doing a Picasso. And uh, I think I am going to be doing this by felting, felting with my wool. I will be getting to that real soon. <coughs> Hi, Joe. Hi, how are you? I'm fine. Uh -huh. <laughs> so before we start, I, I am on early, so I will be, I'm going to show you a few things while we're waiting on everybody to come in. Okay. So there will be no bored moments at all. What you doing, Joe? I just looking. I just got on. I know. I realized that. But I seen the dog out there. She come. She come barking at me, and I went, "What?" And then I seen the door open. And I said, "Oh, you're gonna run. You'll run into your mom and tell her that I'm coming." I, know <laughs> I, I don't know. No, I let the uh, Abby in and Nora the, out. They're the biggest rats I've ever seen. <laughs> anyway, I'll come back when everybody. <laughs> He'll come back in a few minutes. Hi, Cheryl. I so here is this. This was like uh, 2016. This was before I was streaming and I was trying to draw a horse. And I tried. I tried. This is a little book that I made and it's done by weaving the paper. Um, uh, you cut the papers on two strips of paper. Two pieces of paper and you and you you don't cut up to the last line you only cut up all the way up to this last point so this is solid and then on the side is solid and then you weave them together and they and it's it's like this over under over under over under over under. <laughs> and um, it's a little a book that I made a long time ago and you can see the weaving of the two papers. And they're painty papers. So uh, one page was pinks and the other one was in green tones. So you can see how they mesh together. That was a fun uh, project to do. If you all would like to do something like that, I would be glad to put it on my to-do page. And this little book here is my very, very first book that I've ever made. Hi, Janet. Thank you, honey. Thank you for doing that. Cheryl's eating cake. Mm -mm. Yummy. Hi, Glenda. I was working on your book today, too. I'll show you what I got done, Glenda. <laughs> I got this many done. <laughs> Look, all the way up to M. I'm all the way up to M. So uh, I'm going to paint this again, and I've got a few more pages back here to paint. So I'm working on it. Little by little, we'll get there. But um, when I first started stream, um, watching YouTube, I watched Barb Owen, and I watched Cat Hand, 
and Dee Dee Willingham and the Art Sharpa and uh, and uh, Angela Anderson and um, and a few other people that I watch all the time. And Barbara, um, she taught me how to make this fabric paper. And this is this has got a piece of fabric on it, and it's a mesh of um, like tutu material. <laughs> hi, Mary. Hi, hi, everybody coming in. So anyway, this was how she taught me. She taught me how to make this paper, and we started off uh, with a piece of like construction paper. And we we painted on on it, and she taught me about paste, uh, paper paste paints, and she taught me all kinds of things uh, uh, back then, way back then. And I'm thinking this is like 2000 up uh, 2015, right there it is. So she taught me how to make this little book. There's the proof. Back then, and it was my very first book. And um, I sewed it together and stitched it with thread. <laughs> and it's probably strong thread. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. And uh, But in this little art book, I've done a few things um, for myself. This was just for me. And I wanted a collage page. And, and I took um, all of the little newspapers that you get down by the beach <laughs> all of the little flyers and the 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 beach flowers and anything and everything that was around here and i i cut out words and pictures and things that related to me nothing to anybody else but to me and um you know uh, there's a lot of there's a lot of things in here from my church bulletin and the penny press that we get down here, the type of food that we eat down here. There's redfish and and so forth. And that's that's what I saved. And they were all tiny words. And I saved them and I put them on like four pages, five pages, six pages, seven pages, eight pages. And and I was putting in all kinds of restaurants down here. And anything and everything that that related to me or Florida, oranges, pink flamingos, uh, the flea market, and the grocery stores, and different type of foods that we get down here. And we go to a fresh market, and I get fresh green beans and grapes and apples, and uh, just you know, just anything that re that was related to me, and I liked. I put in here on these little tiny words. So this was my first collage, I think. And then I started doing little pages. And this is a quilt pattern. And the name of the quilt pattern is Drunkard, Drunkard's Path. And that's where you put, you, you use this round uh, a quarter of a circle and it's on your uh, quilt pattern. And all you do is put it on and turn it. And when you use the next block, you turn it. And when you get to the next block, you turn it. And you keep turning it on each block as you go around. And it looks like a path. And that's what's called the drunk drunkard's path. And that is a true quilt pattern. <laughs> it has nothing to do with drinking. And this was some water coloring that I did. And uh, this is with some homemade watercolors that I made in the kitchen. And it's a little bit smeary, but that's just because it's old. It's been, you know, since 2015. So uh, then this is, a, this is a page that I did uh, out of an old address book that belonged to my great aunt and it's in her handwriting and it's all of us kids that are in her address book and i wanted I, so i tore out our old addresses and 
I thought it was sentimental because it was all her her handwriting, and uh, she had very pretty handwriting. And here's another couple of pages that how to do different types of art. Uh, I got ideas off of the internet. And I said, well, I can do different kinds of art. So I drew a heart and I have a hole puncher that punches a heart. So here are the holes, the leftover hearts from the hole punch. And I put them in a, in a you know, I glued them down in a circle. Here is a piece of art that I did with crayons. And you, you draw real hard with just regular crayons as hard as you can and then you um, take your finger and rub outward with the wax and it streaks out and that's what I did with that little car, uh, cross right there and it was a technique and here was another technique of, of using a, uh, a, a round circle and I'm looking to see, nope, these are finger dots. There's my fingerprint. <laughs> so this was a fingerprint art, made this little frame. And then I had these little uh, cutouts from a circuit expression cutter. And these are punch out flowers. So this is just some of the art that I did back in 15. And as you can see, it was, it was done with crayons. I had a little bit of, uh, this was a type of uh, yarn that uh, was braided like that. And I learned how to cut things out of magazines. And this was a little uh, umbrella, one of those that umbrellas you put in your drinks. And I had them in my craft supplies. And this was abstract stamping. I stamped uh this round thing and it might have been a lid and then i also stamped a heart and i stamped this little uh stick it was the edge of a sponge and i thought it looked like lipsticks <laughs> so so i called it lipstick and heart <laughs> and i thought it was cute so, you know, so anyway, I did every page was done with decorative scissors and everything was glued back to back. And I, I sewed everything in in a in some kind of a book binding technique. But this was my very first book and I haven't looked at it in a long time. So so here I did. I did butterfly. It became just when the caterpillar thought caterpillar caterpillar thought it was over it became a butterfly i like that and this is time to start sparkle you know and i've used glitter glue on this and it shines and so isn't it cool and it's funny to see something that you've done way back when i've come a long way <laughs> i really have and some of these pages are kind of stuck together and i used i don't know what kind of glue i used back then but whatever it was it was sticky and I, I've got powder all over my hands where I powdered it so that it wouldn't stick and obviously didn't work over here. <laughs> Let's see if I can get it apart. If not, I'll go on. I can get it. But it's the glue. And all I did here was collage all these papers down. And if you ever get two pages that stick together, I might have an idea I used to have it it's probably fell behind I took a piece of uh, fabric any kind of fabric and I put it made a, a pouch and and pulled a drawstring around it and I poured baby powder down in there and then I pulled it tight and tied a knot and so the powder would come out and you pounce the powder it's kind of like those chalk powders that they use when they do um, art uh, gymnastics and stuff and uh, anyway I, I could pounce my 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 books when they stick together so here's a story that I wrote something from memory another story uh, this is something about whipped candles and here's a cow 
This has to do with the story of the Calic. And here's deco art, just collage, just be you, more uh, painting papers, jelly print, Mod Podge papers before the jelly plate. This was done on a kitchen mat. <laughs> and some more collaging and some more words, Reader's Digest stuff, just a collage, collage place. This is done with chalk, and I inherited my mother's chalks. Uh, and I did that. This is my first doodle page ever, May the 29th, 2016. So this is what got me started on the uh, the, uh, the the doodle cards that I put up put out for us um this is this is how i kind of got started doing it and it was my first little doodle page and here's some uh, more artwork just any kind of craft gluing and that's the end of my book but this was my little fabric journal book and it was inspired by barb owen so it's uh it was fun to make and it was fun to do and it really got me inspired to take off from there to where I am today. So I just wanted to share that with you. <laughs> just wanted to share. Let me get rid of that. So how's everybody doing tonight? Okay, Janet's in the house. Who all's in here? Hi, everybody. Hi, Teresa. We've been hanging out all day together, haven't we, Teresa? Cheryl, we all been over at Lisa's and Tanya's. So, anyway, that, that just goes to show you, you got to start somewhere, you know. And if you don't, if you haven't started a collage book or a scrapbook of some sort, you don't have to worry about waiting for the right moment. Start it right away. Get her done. So tonight, um, I'm going to be binding our little booklet together. Um, and uh, I've got some twine that I had in my stash. And this is called Baker's Twine. And it's that little pretty stripe. So, uh, I'm going to be binding it with this. And I'm going to be using two. I guess I'll do it one at a time, the way I've been doing it. So, I'm going to do a slip knot. And I'm going to, I'm going to begin my book. I got it, everything in my book that I wanted in. I got it all Mod Podged. And it's ready to go. So, I'm going to bind it today. Right now. So, okay, Janet's going to start dinner, no problem. <laughs> Understand, Teresa, Teresa will be right behind you. So, anyway, I've already got the holes in mine, and I hope you all have too. And if you're not ready for this next step, then you can watch it when you are ready, okay? So, uh, but I'm going to go into the first hole. I, I doubled my 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 twine. It's divided in half. Right here is the middle part of it. And I'm going to put it in my hole first. And I'm going to uh, take my page. And I'm going to flip it this way. Flip it, flip it to me. Because the, the inside is the binding. And then I'm going to open up my string. And pour my pull my tails through that opening just like that and then I'm going to take my threads and I'm going to go into my second page into the holes and I'm going to flip 
pull, pull the string through. I'm going to flip my page and I'm going to uh, take my threads and and pull them through the center of these threads to make a slip knot. Pull your tails through and then you're going to line your cards up together and tug until the slack is out. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so so um, I'm just going to be doing the same thing over and over. So I'm trying to describe it to you in, in uh, the best words that I can do. Cheryl says, wait. Yes, I will. Could you repaint it? Yes, you could repaint things. Let's see what who's. <laughs> okay, Teresa wants to start again, and that's fine. You know, if they're just cards, and there isn't any reason why you can't start over again. If you're not happy with it, you're not happy with it. Yeah, that's fine. But but the uh, and if you if you can't remember how to do this stitch, there are videos. There are videos on YouTube for binding. This is a slip knot binding. It's very simple. You take and you put your tails through the next page. And you pull most of the slack. And then you open the two threads and you pull your tails through. And then you can fold your cards together in alignment and tug, tug, tug till it all the slack is out of that joint. So I've got three pages there. Hi, Violet. Okay. Okay, and, you know, I've been doing this over a couple of weeks, and if you have any questions, there's no right or wrong, just make your book, and then if you, if you can't figure it out, you, you figure it out and do it and see what it looks like, and then you can say, yes, I did that right, or no, I didn't do it right, I'll do it better next time. That's what you do. <laughs> you just keep going forward. <laughs> Don't give up. So I'm, I've got my next page, and it just so happens to be a window. I'm going to push my two tails through the hole. Pull the slack up a little bit. And then I'm going to separate the two strings and pull my tails through. And then I'm going to lay my page down. And I, st I like to stand them up. And then I tug, gently tug the slack out. So you're tying a knot, a slip knot. And the knot is on the edge of your spine. It's not in the middle of your book. It's not over here. And when you open your book, there's a knot there, so it won't come undone. And I'm going to do it again. And I'm going to take my tails and push them through the hole. And if your holes are small and you have a small twine, you can put your threads on a darning needle. But so far, I'm not having too much trouble. I'm kind of managing, managing okay. So there's my next page. Get some of the slack out. And I go back between the two threads and I pull my tails through. 
I flipped my page. I like to stand it up. And then I gently tug until the slack is out. And your cards are strong. Your cards are strong. And if you need to make your holes bigger, I discussed this the other day, uh, you can take a skewer or a pencil and you can go into your hole with a skewer and, and you can sort of roll it around and stretch that hole. Oh, look, Beth, you are live now. Yeah, yeah. Oh, <laughs> okay, Teresa. <laughs> so you can stretch your hole, Rebecca, by rolling it around. It stretches that out, and it makes it a little bit uh, easier to go through. You can also take a pencil. Take a pencil, and you can go in your hole. And you can do the same thing by trying to screw the pencil in that hole. You can stretch that hole a little bit bigger. Just like I did there. So you don't have to re-punch. If you've already got holes in it, just use a pencil and, and twist it and, and it'll stretch it for you. It'll stretch it. It'll stretch it. Yep. That's good. So I'm taking my tails and I'm going to go into my holes. <laughs> I think I need my scissors. Oh, another thing that you can do and I can show you real quick. Now I've got my my two ends together and I cut the I cut it off take a little bit of glue I don't care what kind it could be any kind of glue preferably one that comes out and you put a little glue on your finger like that okay and you take your 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 two ends and you kind of, you smoosh them in the glue about two inches up, okay? And you just twist your string together, twist your glue in your between your fingers, and rub it for just a minute, half a minute. And the glue is starting to dry as I speak. The glue is starting to get thicker and dry right now. It's drying. So you can take and lay that down for just a moment. And have a sip of your beverage. And tidy up your desk while you're here. And that's been about 30 seconds, right? Not very long, right? Well, when I pick this up, it's still a little damp. But it's hard. It's hard. And look, it's pointy too. See how pointy it is? I just made myself a little glue needle out of my threads. I learned how to do this uh, with my beads. Um, and I've been doing I've been playing around with beads for a long time. Uh probably 20 years or so and uh and i did um crafts at the nursing home and there was these ladies that wanted to do, to do beads and and they could do pony beads pretty good they could get through get into the pony beads because it has a nice bold hole but if i had other kind of beads there uh with a medium size hole it was hard for them to get through so I took all of their their uh, strings and I gave them elastic. And I gave them about eight inches so they could make a bracelet. And I would do this to the, the end 
of one of the elastic and the other elastic, I tied a pony bead on the other end of it so that whatever they thread on there wouldn't fall off. Okay, so it was it was easy peasy to do. So I learned how, I learned this trick a long time ago. So now I can go into my holes without having to fret about the two threads they're together. Okay, that's your tip of the day. So I went into my top hole. I come back and go through the middle of the two and pull my tails through. And I lay my card down and I, I, I tug on the slack. Get the slack out. And now I can go really fast. You're behind one minute. Okay. Thank you, Teresa. Uh, so anyway, it's the same thing over and over. You go into the hole. I'm going to be doing all of this again in just a minute for this the next hole, the, the other hole. So I go into the top hole of my book binding. I created a little knot. <laughs> Pull my knot out. There it is. And I go back to the double threads and I pull my tails through the threads. Put the pages together and pull your, your extra slack out. It's making a braid. It's a slip knot braid. Okay. And I'm going to do it again for the next one. I put my tails through the hole with my makeshift needle. Pull up some of the slack. I go back between the two threads and I pull my tails through to make a slip knot. Close my pages and take out the slack. Over and over, the same thing. I go into my hole, my first hole. Take out some of the slack. Go between the two. And pull your tails through. Close your book. And take out the slack. All of the knots are on the edge of the spine. On the back of the spine. Okay, Teresa. She's a cooking dinner. And I'm on my last page. And when we get to this one, you need to pay attention. It's, I'm going to do the same thing with, um, with this one. Well, for some reason, I think there's glue, glue in there and it's not open. So I'm going to get my pencil back. <laughs> and there was, there was a little piece of, uh, uh, when I Mod Podged it, there was a little piece of glue there that wouldn't let me thread my needle, my makeshift needle. So you see, it happens. Nothing is nothing bad. You pull your pull your tails through, push them, put them through the two other threads, pull your tails through, close your book, and take out the slack. Now, this is the very last page, so I'm making sure it's all the way I want it. It's not too late to undo anything. Nothing is tied in a knot. So, <clears throat> I always, I, I, I had too much, but that's okay. It won't go to waste. I'll use it for something. So, I take my two tails and I separate them. One to the top and one to the bottom. 
and I open the last page back up and I come up on each side of the last joint and I straddled it with this uh, with these tails and I'm going to tie a couple of knots to make it very secure and tight and it, this way it will not come undone okay I close the book and these are my these are my 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 tails and I'm just going to hang on to them. I want them I'm going to put beads on them and decorate the back of my spine. So I'm going to leave my tails long on purpose. I could cut this real close because I tied it in a real strong knot. If you want your spine to be bead free and tassel free then you would cut yours off now pretty just almost almost to the neck to neck of it and it will stay and if you want to put a dot of glue on that last knot you can do that let it dry and then you know for sure that that's that cord is not going to come undone and there's there's the first uh holes of our spine and we're going to do it one more time but everything opens up flat just the way we planned it you can flip through as many times that you want without any any problems whatsoever this type of uh, binding does not create stress on your pages on your holes of your pages because the joint that's bending the hinge is on the very back of it not not up here it's 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 on this side of the strings all of the hinges are back here there's no hinges near this hole or near this hole it's all on the back of the spine so that's why it's able to open up flat and you don't have to worry about it it uh, uh, closing on you or anything it'll stay flat this makes a great little uh, conversation book to put on the coffee table. So now I'm going to do it again. I got to get me some more cord. Uh, I could, I could, I could use this cord and I'm going to, I'm going to tie a knot uh, in the end of this cord after I put it through the first page. <laughs> Here's what I'm going to do. Don't want to confuse you, but normally this would be a a, 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 a a complete end. And this end has my needle on it, right? So I'm going to take this end and I'm going to start it on my book and tie the two ends together to... Uh, so I can begin my book with this leftover thread. You can do anything you want. It's your book. You know, there's no right or wrong. If I tie a knot in that, it is not going to come apart. Okay. So I've got my, my first page on. And now I'm going to take my tails and go into the, the next page, the second page. And I'm going to string it through and I'm going to come back to the front and push my tails through the center of this joint and I close the book I'm on the wrong side but that's okay um, here we go I close the book and I take out all of the slack and it's exactly the same thing. I'm going to go through the each page. Come up the middle of the two strings with my tails. Close the book and pull it tight. Easy peasy. I like book binding. So I go through 
and then I come up between the two threads and close the page and pull it tight. Go through. Come up between the two threads. Close the page and pull tight. Okay, I'm going to thread my tails through. Come up between the two threads. Pull my tails through there. Close the page and pull it tight. Take out the slack. Go through. It's the same thing over and over. Go between the two thre the two threads. Close the page and make it tight. Go through. Come up between the tails, between those two threads. Close the book and pull tight. And you know, when you make your book, you, you have to always remember, there's always an ugly stage before you get to the beauty. <laughs> and I know halfway through my books, I was, I thought, oh my gosh, I put too much on it. Oh my gosh, it's got way, it's way too busy. But you know what? I absolutely love what I've done to my book. So this is the last one. I take my tails and come up between the two threads. Close the book and make it tight. I'm going to cut the glue part off. <clears throat> This is my glue needle. <laughs> I'll save it for something. And I'm going to open up my threads. I got two of them. <clears throat> and I'm going to open the last page. And I'm going to straddle this last hole. So I got to put one of the threads up between the, the pages. And then the other one can come up to the bottom. And I have straddled this last joint with my two tails. I can tie a knot now and then it won't come undone. And I close the book and there's my tails from the bottom holes and there's my tails from the top holes. So I've got two tails here that I can play with. This little thread here was where I tied the knot at the beginning Okay, and I can trim that or leave it alone. I'm just going to trim it. You can't hardly even tell it's there. And so I can take these now on the back of my spine. I can add some beads to it. I can tie it in a bow <laughs> and just leave it like that. You know, that's just the spine of my book. If you don't want your things that long, you can trim it up. And if you take your your two rabbit ears on your bow and tie these in a knot, one more knot, then your bow will never come undone. So I tie my bow, my rabbit ears in a knot, give it an extra knot in the middle of my bow, and now it will always stay that way. And I and I can just trim these up a little bit now to make it match the bows like that. You can do it any way you want. So this is the front of the book. And I had, um, I think this thing needs to go in a bow. <laughs> it's very long. <laughs> Let's see what I can do here. Yeah, I could put it in a bow. 
And uh, this is a piece of ribbon. And what you can do here on a piece of ribbon, if it's too long and you tie it in a bow like that, you get it exactly the way you want it. And then you can put a little spot of glue on this bow in, in each side of the little joints. And you can use a, you can use a, a skewer. Take a skewer and uh, put some glue on the skewer. Like that. And then go underneath the bow to where the knot is and just put a little glue there. Just a little. And then a little glue on the other side. And that, that should keep that bow from coming unhinged, unraveling. So I kind of got it glued there. And let it dry. You have to let it dry. And uh, then this little bow will stay the way it is. Just add a little glue to it. And uh, it's, it's on there. The glue is on there. So just let it dry. And then that little uh, bow will stay there. And let's see what else I can show you. Um, I, I went ahead and tied uh, these two ribbons on. <clears throat> and I said that they might be too short. I didn't know. I had. I didn't know how much. If I could tie. I didn't know if I could tie these. To make a closure or not. And I now we'll try it. And I think I'll be able to do it. Yeah. I'm able to do it. So there's my little book. It's hinged. It's binded. Ten pages. Ten, p ten card playing cards. Hi, Journey. Okay. It's very, very redundant. The same thing over and over. So I encourage you to do it. And I encourage you to look at some videos maybe. So if you want, I'll do a flip. I'll flip through my book one more time. Now that I've got it binded. So this is my front page. And I did add a button. I had a flat back button that was a heart. So it got added to it this morning. So everything in here is just bits and bobs from my stash. Thank you, Happy Diane. <laughs> Thank you. I hope it encourages you. And uh, so uh, there's just all kinds of things from my art room in here. And I love it. I love every little piece because... I know where it came from, and I remember that book paper, that scrapbook paper. I can remember this bear from the bear we painted not too long ago. We've got butterflies. We always have butterflies. I've got a butterfly book collection over here, and there's a lemur, and we painted a lemur not too long ago, and tags. We do tags all the time for each other. I've got inspiration words, and uh, I've got little pieces of uh, safety pins with pearls on them, lace, brads, bees. There was a bumblebee. Yeah. So there's just so many things on each page. I can see the music paper. I can see the book text. Uh, I can see lots of things in here, you know, and one of the things, you know, hi, Sharon, um, you know, we like to make lists, you know, how many times that Mary says, okay, we're making a list, <laughs> and we sit down, and we start throwing out words for the list, I could do the same thing to this, and I like to do that with Joe, and I, I'll, I'll say, Joe, how many things do you see on this one page, you know? And and I can go, well, there's book pages, there's music paper, there's Chinese paper, there's two little girls, 
There's a, a there's a, a ladybug, and there's some paint. There's blue paint and yellow paint. There's a, some ephemera from a scrapbooking corner there. I've got uh, I've got washi tape on here, right there, and there's a word. I can go on and on and on. There's a punch out, and I I inked it with two different colors of ink. I've got a paper clip on here with a pretty bow. Uh, you just keep going on and on, and I like to do stuff like that. Uh, it's just it's just something that my mind likes to do. Hi, Mina. <laughs> Okay, when you want to add a charm or something to the back, you would literally tie it onto these strings. And if you have any leftover string, you can use that. You would take your string and open up a page and, and put this string around this joint. Push it through. And then... And then this one comes up to the top of the joint and you can tie a charm on this way any way you want you can punch another little hole and add a charm to the corner of your page i added a little piece of yarn here this little hole here this little hole in this flower i punched it with the crocodile okay and you can add some thread through that to and knot it on one side and hang a charm, hang a charm on this side and then pull the strings over to this side and knot it or tie a bow. And the charm will be over here. There's lots of ways you can add a charm. Well, hi, Sharon. Hi, everybody. So anyway, this was my little book. This is this is what we did, and uh, I'm done with it. So, if in, unless you ask me uh, for something, I, I'm not going to bring it back up again. Unless unless you ask me and, and you know request to see it again or ask me a question. Okay. So, uh, lots of different ways you can do things. Okay. And now, oh, I forgot. I do have two tags to put in so that's probably what cheryl was getting at <laughs> so now that i have two tags let me see what i do with that string here i do want to put it on there too i'm going to leave this uh, on here and i will tie some more beads on it so i've got some string that i tied on to a, a joint and it doesn't matter which joint any joint and I can add a bead onto the here for the uh, back of my back side. It could be a bead or it could be a charm. Yeah. I'm getting the beads out. Watch out. So I'm just going to take... <coughs> I'm just going to take this string that I tied on the back of my book and I've got some glue on this end so that's going to be my needle and I'm going to take a bead and add it onto my thread and then I'm going to tie a knot so that my bead will stay on the back of my book. Did I do it? I don't think I did it. There we go. So I've got a bead, a red bead right there. And I can keep adding more if I want. Now, uh, here's my tags. So um, I think I'll put one of them here. And I've had these, you remember the leather strips? Well, I'm going to use that, and I'm just going to tie it around this joint right here. So I go one side, I straddle the joint, <clears throat> one side on each side of the joint, and I just literally tie, I'm going to tie a knot. 
and I can either tie it that away or I could take both of them together and tie a knot. Like that. And pull it tight. So I just tie the knot. And then there's a tag in my book now. Okay. And if it's a little too tight, you can loosen it up a little bit to make it fit. Okay. So I'll go back over here a little bit. And I'll put my other tag in. Which is the round one. I'm going to straddle that hinge right there. And... I'm going to see what's going on here first. Here we go. It's okay. So I straddled my hinge and I'm going to tie another knot in these two little, what do we call these fringes? They're fringes. <laughs> little fringes. These are fringe benefits. So I tie a knot with that one. Don't tie it too tight so it'll hang. There. That's better. So I got a tag there. And then I got a tag there. So there's my tags. And you just keep adding on to this, the, the, the hinge with another string if you want to add something else, a tassel or anything else. And what you have back here is your uh tassels that are on the back of your binding and i like having those because i know what what i've done okay and that's just a personal preference okay so that's it we did tags and everything so uh there you go now okay is everybody okay now for a while <laughs> are you okay okay the next thing we're going to do is uh i i showed you this bookie and i showed i wanted to show you this book this is a magazine so you can take a magazine and you can cut it in half and use half of it or you can fold it in half like I did and it'd be a long book. This was a Texas State travel guide book. So the pages in it were really heavy. And that's the kind of a sturdy book that you want to get sometimes. The magazine books uh, get a tendency to be a little bit weak in the joints uh, next to the spine. So I made this book up a long time ago, back in 1516. I don't know if there's any dates in here, but let me see. No date there. But uh, I painted and folded, and this one is a flip out. I took two, three pages and painted them together. And, uh, and then I, it made a heavier page. And I started gluing and, and um, just painting in this book. I haven't done very many uh, pictures in it uh, because I, I got put on the shelf and I forgot about it. But this is one of the very first things I ever learned how to do from Dee Dee. And uh, so uh, let's see. Uh, I thought that might have a date on it. Ah, that was a, a, a game that we played online. I'm going to keep flipping. Maybe I'll see a date. So anyway, uh, a lot of the pages uh, are, are, you know, you glue them together and you make a thick page. And uh, and I like, it was kind of like reverse collage uh, on some of these. You'll see in a minute. 
And this is a open, and I did put some stamps down in here. Some of them, there's pockets in some of them. This one folds out so I could do a reverse collage. This was kind of a reverse collage. And I took this picture and glued it down on both sides. So I was trying to get into it. But, and this was a reverse collage. And this was out of that Texas book. And I thought it was pretty cool to put on. So you just play until you, uh, you just keep playing, you know, in your books and things. And you start gluing things down. And then next thing you know, you'll, you'll have something that you created. And here I created, this was an ocean scene. And I went ahead and, and painted it blue to continue the ocean. <laughs> but I had as far as I got. So uh, this was, you know, this is not a real good reverse collage book, but I did it. I did, you know, I used leftover paint. I glued a picture down there. I used, you know, more paints and I was busy with the painting and I didn't have time to do anything else at the time. So I was lucky just to get the, the painting. So this is a double page spread and I glued the cat in there on this scene. So, uh, so uh, that was kind of a, one of my very first reverse collages. This is all out, that's as far as I got on it. Here I got a balloon. And I was going to try to incorporate something into the scenery. Trying to get motivated. So, uh, so you see, if you don't start somewhere, you'll never, you know, you, you, if you just start somewhere, You'll, you'll eventually get an idea and you go, oh, yeah, that's what I want to do. And it'll hit you and then you will finish it. You know, this was this was some of my very first things that I was trying to, to get inspired. I liked what Dee Dee was doing and I didn't cut my book in half. I made my long ways because I wanted to be different and I made it into me. You know, I, it was me. It was just it was just a book for me. And uh, and that's all I ever got it through it. Uh, you know, I worked in it for two, three months and that's it. And I did put a pocket right here. I glued this down to make a pocket. So there was my magazine journal. <laughs> but, you know, I might I might go back and finish some of this stuff, you know, so so I'm going to hang on to it. So I want you all to get inspired and, you know, do things, too. All right, let's do a Picasso. <laughs> and you guys are going to flip when you see what I'm going to do. And I never did find the kitty cat Picasso. So until we're, until we find it, I don't have it. I know I didn't throw it away, but I don't have it. Here it is. I found it. So, uh, I am going to do the abstract Picasso, but I'm not going to do it in my book. I'm going rogue. Uh, so, so this is what we did the other day, <clears throat> and um, I'm not going to do it in my book. I'm going to do it right here. You know what this is? <laughs> Hi, everybody. Okay, we're going to do Picasso. Who's going to play? You can use magic markers. You can use your acrylic paint. You can use scrapbook paper. Um, you can use... Uh, wash, uh, watercolors. I did, I did mine in watercolors Saturday night, magic markers rather. Uh, so tonight I'm going to do it by felting. So I thought this would be a good time to 
uh, try something new. Okay, good, Cheerian. Mina usually plays. Anyway, um, you can play now or later. So we have Rolla Picasso. We have Abstract. Roll a abstract, and we have roll a cat. So you can play in any one of you want. I will show. I will show you each each move for each paper. Hi, Debbie. Oh, Debbie, can't you take a five minute break and do one and just do one off a of pen and paper crayon and construction paper you could surely you can find some construction paper in there <laughs> get you get you a crayon and a piece of construction paper yeah yeah we won't tell we won't tell on you debbie <laughs> so i'm hoping that i can do this <clears throat> and and not take too long because I've got to felt each little figure on my on my felting board. And I'm going to use the abstracts. I think I could felt them pretty fast. <laughs> Come on, Debbie. You can do it. So anyway, this little kit is so cute. Everything's at my fingertips. And I can go real fast Ooh, with this one. I haven't got to use it very long, very much. And my felt, my felt uh, had a piece of corner cut out on it, so I had to mend a piece. I felted a corner on. <laughs> I'm just using a piece of scraps. I do like my single needle. <clears throat> and I think that's all I need out of there. So let's get the dice. Let's roll the dice. <laughs> Please play. Please play. <laughs> Hi, Sharon. We're going to play Roller Picasso. I'm going to do felting. I'm felting my Picasso. <laughs> and I've got some collars. Let's see. I'm going, to, I'm going to get some collars over here so I can have them at my fingertips. Because I, I don't have time to dilly-dally around. I got to do it fast. Okay. Here's some blue. And yellow. I need uh, six collars. Oh, we want something prettier than that. I like this. Oh, we can do better than this. Come on, girls. Let's pick out something prettier. Let's go with this one. Let's go with this one. And let's go with this one. Let's go with primary collars. So this will be a first, guys. I bet this is a first anywhere, everywhere across the world. This is a first. We're playing a Picasso felting style. The very first number is six. So if you're doing a cat, you're making a bib. <laughs> it looks like a little bib. This is the cat. It's the head of the cat. If you need to see the picture again, let me know. Uh, this is the um, abstract. Kind of looks like a bird's head. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to felt this. And then it's a diamond for the head on the Picasso, roll of Picasso. It's a curvy dime, diamond. Okay. So let's see here. Let's get busy. <laughs> so.
So I am going to put this piece down here. We're making history tonight, girls. We're making history. There it is. It's a it's it's kind of a bird. And I think I'm going to use a contrasting color for the uh, the uh I got static electricity. Look at that. <laughs> ha ha ha. It's electric. So there's my eye. And then I'm going to make his head, his topper with this too. Okay, here's mine. Does that look kind of like that? Is that good close enough? I know it. I'm felting it. <laughs> oh, great, Debbie. <laughs> good. Good girl. So I think that's good enough. I think that looks good enough. I could have made it a little bit more hookier on the nose, I guess. It's good. Okay. I've missed, I have missed doing my felting. I've missed it. Okay. Heard a crunch, crunch, crunch. Yeah, Teresa's going to come back and go, what? <laughs> okay, does everybody have their Picasso? Are you, uh, I, I'm, I have to work fast, but I don't want to, I, I'm not in a rush. I'm excited. So this was the Picasso head. It was a curvy diamond. And then the cat was like a bib for the cat. Okay, I'm going to roll again. And it's going to be a one. <laughs> It's going to be a one. Uh, it's an I for Picasso. And you get a comma I. It looks like a comma. Just like a comma. That's for the Picasso. And the cats. You get cat eyes. Oval cat eyes with the, the uh, up and down pupils. Okay, and the abstract piece looks like an arrow. Mm -hmm. Kind of looks like a heart to me. I think I'll use red.
Okay, the diamond. <clears throat> the curvy diamond was the first part of the Picasso head. And then the eye is, uh, is the first eye, and it's the comma. Hi, Melissa. Get your pens and paper out. <laughs> We're playing a game. I'm almost done. Just a minute. One more little piece and I think I've got it. Yeah, a playing card. It does. It does. It's like a spade, a red spade. <laughs> okay, I'm rolling the dice for you guys. What you doing, Norma? Norm? What are you barking at? Okay, six again. So, six on the third move is on the kitty cat. You get a nose. And it's a pyramid with its top cut off. It's a, it's a short pyramid. Bottom part of a triangle. That is the kitty cat, roll a cat nose. On the Picasso, you get another eye. And believe it or not, it's the sister eye to the comma. It's the sister eye to the one you had the first time. So it's going the other direction. 
it's a comma going the other direction. And for the shapes, I get to draw lines. And I get one solid half of a circle line. One line for the shapes. Abstract. Well, let's see. Let's do a blue line. Yes, Nora. Sit down. Sit down. Lay down. Lay down. Be good. So, I think I'm going to start over here and make my line. It's a half of a circle. I just can't imagine anybody else playing this game using their felting supplies. Now, come on. No way. No way, Jose. I just can't believe it. Everybody okay? Janet's done with dinner. Look what we're doing, Janet. <laughs> oh, a wing. Uh-huh. You think it should become a wing? I probably should have. You're right. You know, I need to start asking you guys <laughs> before I start doing it myself. Yeah, because that could have been his body. This, this heart could have been the bird's body. Wow, I could take it out. How about if I just add a wing? I'll just do a little more extra. <laughs> I'll just do a little extra. Shh. Nobody will know but us. You're so right. I can see the bird, and this is, could be the bird's body. And, you know, when we used to do felting and we would do a scenery, you know, I love doing those. I love doing the sceneries. Kind of miss doing it. We might have to go back and reminisce and <laughs> do some more. Okay, I got a wing. Is that what you were kind of thinking of? Okay, we got us a wing. Maybe this is the baby bird under the mother's wing. This is the mother's wing. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Now we got a bigger picture going on. She's the baby. It's a baby. Okay. Everybody caught up? 
<laughs> yes, Teresa. <laughs> Very good. <laughs> I need to put that in the, the wing book. <laughs> wing nut <that> book. <laughs> I'm winging it. <laughs> oh, thank you, Janet. <laughs> Number five. Number five. I don't think I'm going too fast, but if I am, just let me know. Number five, we are going to do a, a nose. A nose on the Picasso is an upside down seven. Upside down seven. <laughs> me too, Teresa. <laughs> we, there's an upside down seven. And for the kitty cat gets a mouth and it was number five and the mouth is just a smiley mouth just a smile and then five for me is an oval we did the line this was a line a curved line now i get a circle shape a geometric shape shape and it's an oval Well, I just I'll just incorporate the blue, this other blue, and do an oval over the whole thing. <laughs> Hi, Joyce. <laughs> Upside down seven. That's right. Seven up. Oh. Okay. So let's see, let's use um, the green. And I think I'm just going to go ahead and, and uh, over, the, over it the rest of the green uh, with the blue. And I'll incorporate the blue. So now you all have an excuse to get your felting back out again if this is going to be a hit it's easy to do it's easy to do it's fun you just have to go slow <laughs> and not do fast like me I go too fast. I get excited. So I'm going to finish this oval. I've got one more prompt, depending on what it is. I'll try to keep it within this, uh, this size, and I can trim this up and glue it in my Picasso book over here. We'll, glue, we'll put them in. <laughs> Look at that. Look at that. Hi, Mary. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> We're going rogue. We're going rogue again, Mary. <laughs> I'm felting my Picasso. <laughs> We're doing, we have three Picassos going. There's, there's the roller Picasso, the roller cat Picasso, 
and the role of shape Picassos. And these are shakes, abstracts. It's a felting Picasso. <laughs> I'm so happy. <laughs> I know. I've been wanting to get some of my felting out. And I said, well, I'll just felt a Picasso. Yeah, yeah, that's what I'll do. Okay, so I'm going to roll again. And I think the, uh, the Picasso's got a few more steps to go. So I better hurry up. Number four, and this is a mouth, and it's a sideway heart without a point. That's a mouth. I guess it's it's going like this. Blah 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 blah. It's it's looking this way. It's a mouth. <laughs> it is. I can see it. I can see it. See, you got this upper part, and then the de the lower part, and this is the this is where the tongue is, and and uh, and the mouth is you know the mouth is talking this direction. <laughs> oh well, <laughs> I'm sorry. Joyce has a question. Yes, Joyce. Uh, no, I'm not ignoring you, Joyce. I knew you came in the room. And we're glad to have you here. Joyce, Joyce, I still want to know what Nora did the other day. She dug out the yard. She dug out the yard. She digs, she digs out and goes to the neighbor's yards and steals their toys. She comes back with a new toy every time she comes home. So we're deterring her from digging out. <laughs> She's a digger. But that's all but that's all she does. But she always comes back. Oh, she rolled in something. Something was stinky. So she got uh I got she got a good brushing. And I think Joe might have given her a bath that time. And Abby, I put Abby in the pool with me. I'm in Volusia County. I'm on the Space Coast side. Volusia County is my county. I'm, uh, I'm in the middle on the East Coast. Yes, you got it, Mina. It's her Toys R Us. That's exactly what it is. So Joe had a talk with the lady that had that the, the toys she's been swiping, and um, she says, "You know, you have a beautiful dog." And Joe says, "Well, how come? How do you know?" Well, she was over here <laughs> the other day, and he goes, "Oh, she was." And I said, he said, well, do you wouldn't happen to have a little squeaky toy, you know, and he described it. And she goes, yeah. And she says, well, when Nora t stole it, you know, she goes, well, don't worry. She says, we've got plenty. <laughs> and she can come over any time because she's a she's a beautiful, pleasant dog. She is not mean. She doesn't bite. She doesn't growl. She barks when she hears the door, you know, someone at the door. But but really, she's she's wonderful. And um yeah. And she runs this entire yard that we have. And I love it. I love to see her running in the yard. It's just, it really pleases me. So she might have to buy some Christmas presents this year for the neighbors. Mm -hmm. Yeah. She might have to get dressed up with a Santa hat on and go around and, and, and knock on the neighbor's doors. Uh -huh. That's what she needs to do. <laughs> Yeah, she was nice, and and um, they have a big wood fence, a redwood fence, and it's beautiful and everything. So Joe, he takes and puts um, fencing down in the ground where she has been digging out, so that uh, uh, she can't redig in the same hole. So I'm hoping she'll get tired of it. Okay, now let's roll again. What did we do? We did the mouth. That was. That was four for the mouth. 
and four for the for the abstract is uh, double triangles. Hmm. I don't know exactly, but I'll do it. Double triangles. Okay. Okay, Cheryl posted her book. Oh, good, Cheryl. I'll get it in just a second. Okay, there's one. And I guess I could put the other one over here. <laughs> yeah, that's what I'll do. I think I did that. All right. One more time. Okay, there's my Shapes Picasso Shapes. <laughs> he does. He's sitting in a swing. Sitting in a swing. Let's see. Wow, my mini crunchy book, Cheryl. Let's see, where'd it go? Oh no, there it is. Isn't that pretty? You did good, Cheryl. Love it. I love the collars. I love that eyelet yarn. That's cute. Good job. Love it. This must be, uh, okay, this was last to uh, Janet's uh, Picasso's from the other day. Okay, cool. <laughs> oh, I was laughing at this, I, and it was from Kendra, and she said she stood up four times today. Yay! So now she's going to be taking one step at a time. Bless her heart. Yes. She is a... She's a trooper. She's 
She, this is uh, Teresa's yard. Nice yard. Lots of stuff. You got a little garden going on in there. A little garden. Cool. And I don't want This is not sparkle, is it? Is that sparkle? Teresa. Oh my goodness. I guess I haven't seen her for a while. Nice, nice cool tree to sit under. All right. You got your own little jungle, your own little jungle going on there. Good girl. I'd, I'd have a picnic there. I could sit there. Okay, let's see. I think that's all. Okay, I think that's it. Okay. So, this is mine. This is the back side. <laughs> and I think I'm going to take and put him in um, my book. And I'll show you what I've done to my book today. I've been working in my book. So the front of the book, I put my uh, sheets in here. And this one is right there. And what I did was I was, my book is full. I think I had one page left and then I had this page. So I, I glued on the back some extra pages. And I, and I glued them on back to back so I didn't have to have a spine. Oh, the last roll was, um, yes, I'd be glad to. Oh, I forgot on, the, on this one. You got more rolls. Sorry. You did your mouth. Now I'm going to do your ears. You got your ears. Okay, Sherry, and bye, honey. Number one. And it's this squiggly ear. No, I I I, I forgot. <laughs> I forgot. So we're still doing the ears. There's a squiggly. And I think that I could add that squiggly up here for a chain. I think that would be a good idea. While I'm waiting on you guys. Let's see if I can do a chain. I'll make an ear up here. <laughs> myself that's okay we'll survive Oh, the cat one too. I'm sorry. 
I'm just not growing very good tonight. I, I'm sorry. You're right. Number five for the for the um, it was number one, and it's regular straight whiskers. Hi, Tanya. <laughs> We're trying to do a roll a Picasso game. It's the straight st whiskers. Okay, and I'm going to do the second ear for those doing the, the Picasso face, and it's a six, <laughs> and it's the sister ear, it's a sister one to the other ear, the other ear is a squiggly, and for the kitty cat, you get a mouse. Number six is a mouse. And then I will make one more roll for the hair. And the hair is going to be five. If you're doing the Picasso, it's a five. It looks like an Egyptian hairdo. <laughs> straight, straight down. Okay. I can clean my mess up while we're waiting. We felt it up because so. And it's 9, 8.30, so that's good. Better take a picture. And we did that. Let's put my needle up. That was really a lot of fun. So we were definitely going to have to do that some more. I keep this um, on my desk, these little supplies, so I can have them at any time I want. Everybody okay now? I'll put my dice up so we won't lose them. Okay. Uh, I think we need to do some doodles. We haven't done some, we've missed a, our doodles for first a uh, couple of times. So I thought I would do play catch up on the doodles. And I'm going to put this in the very back of my book on the hard cardboard. I'll put it right there. So uh, we can include 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 it. That's a first. Okay. And um, I noticed that we had a couple more pages in our uh, doodles that we can go back to. I thought that would be good. I thought they looked really cool around the pictures. Yeah, the hair was Egyptian style hair. Egyptian style. Uh, this one right here. Uh, 
Okay. So, let's see what's next. These two. So, if anybody is ready to doodle, who would like to doodle with me? Uh, I'll get a couple of cards out and see how many we can do. We can fit on a page. See, I have over 70 doodles in here. So, you know, that's quite a lot of doodles. So if we could do two or three at, time, at a time, I think that would be good to get through the doodles. So... Doodle doodle day. Doodly doo day. That's right, Violet. So I'm going to, I think I'll leave this one at two, one for each side. And I think I'll do this one in four. And we can get an extra doodle in, a couple extra doodles in. So, the first doodle is lines, lines of three, lines of three, and they're in any direction. There's nothing, so if you just keep turning your hand and do lines of three, that's the doodle line. Lines of three. And they're all about the same size. Something like that. Okay. We're practicing our doodles. And that was easy. And this doodle here is just drawing flowers. And this reminds me of childhood. This was the only flower that I knew how to doodle <laughs> in, you know, in the back of our books. So I'm going to do um, big ones and little ones uh, for this corner here. And I'm going to start out real big. Okay, and then I'm going to do a little one around it. And you can do yours any way you want. Just do your flowers. I hear a kitty cat. I doodled flowers. Okay, 
and then the next one and if you whatever you're doodling if you're just if you're doodling on your pages or something and you're not finished you can always go back and finish fill them in so i can move on to the next doodle this one is going to be you're doodling curvy lines and then you're doing different um designs in them so the lines are, are uh, irregular they're all irregular as far as how wide they are the, it's just a curvy line so i'm going to i'm going to do my curvy line around my picture and uh And I'm going to start down here and work my way up. So it's a really kind of a wavy, 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 wavy line. And I'm going to go right beside it until I can't go any further. And it might end up coming down and back up out of the picture right here. So that's good. So this one is going to be wavy. <laughs> wavy 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 and wavy and then we're going to we're going to tend to these in just a minute so i'm going to go down now from my wavy lines wavy wavy wave and i think i have room for one more perfect now, um, there are, you pick up, pick, pick one line, it doesn't matter, and I'm going to just put dots, just plain dots, in one of those lines, like a little river. So, I'm just doing random dots. So that one's got dots. And I'm going to go every other one. Uh, they've got every two, but I'm just going to do every other one. And, the, and then the, so I'm going to skip one line. And then I'm going to make, uh, make it like a boardwalk and put lines in this one. And then I'm going to skip one. And now I'm going back to dots. And down here, this last one was lines. And I can go ahead and it's a half of a wavy. But I'll go ahead and put my lines in. Like that. And then I skip one and I do lines again. And then I skip one and I do dots. So that's what I did <laughs> on my on my doodle. That's my doodle. Well, Barbara, we've been doing this for a little while. We've done we've done it before. Uh, we've picked it up. I don't even have a date on this one. Uh, around the first part of May. Before Mother's Day, we started doing these. And and um, we're just practicing our doodles. Okay. It's, it's wavy lines. And then you decorate every other one. And I use straight lines and dots. And we did the flowers. And then we did the three lines. Practicing our doodles.
Oh, really, Barbara? Okay. Well, I guess I could do a flip in a few minutes. <laughs> I'll flip through. This is kind of my happy mail everyday book. Journal book. I do a lot of happy mail. And I did um, a lot of Mother Day pages last month. And so there's a lot of there's a lot of sentimental in here for me. Um, so uh, yeah, that's what I did. It was the, before Mother's Day, and 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 I I had received a bunch of sympathy cards, and then after Mother's Day, I said, well, let's do something different instead of doing a Mother's Day page like this. Let's do a doodle. And I don't know, I just made it up. And and I said, let's do this instead of a Mother's Day. And my mother collared these pictures. She liked the collar. So when she would finish with her book, she would give me the books back. She says, well, maybe you can use them in your art. And I said, okay, I'll try. <laughs> and lo and behold, I'm using them in my art. And so I, I fussy cut them out. Uh, out of the coloring books and then and then I've, I've been do we've been doodling around them so we're still uh, honoring my, my mom in a sense <laughs> yeah and uh, so I'm trying to uh, it, you know I was I was telling the girls the other day doing those sentimental pages like that really helped me uh, get through some of my grief and um, and just sharing that with people and with others it just it really helps it just helped yes and I continue to I get to continue to kind of honor my mom by putting her pictures in here and she was cute. She was she was funny. She uh, uh, I'd ca I'd come in one day and she'd be sitting there coloring with, of course it was with pencils, you know. Of course she would have colored with crayons. She didn't care, but um, uh, like a little girl. <laughs> so she was ver reverting back to some of her, but she was she's always been crafty, always been crafty. So so we so we've been practicing our doodles. And some of the girls have been doing the doodles around their Picassos. So that makes it even better. So it, it has, it has, it has. So we got another doodle to do. And we've done three. So this one's kind of hard. Kind of hard. But it's, um, it's not that hard. And I'll show you. I think I have two cards here. No, I don't. Yes, I do. No, I don't. Yes, I do. Okay. So what we have are uh, upside down V's. They're little mountains. Okay. So we're going to draw all our mountains. And it's kind of like a zigzag. Because each point is in the valley of the point above it somehow. So I'm going to attempt this <laughs> and I'm going to start down here and I'm going to make my mountains and it's just, they're just, um, you, you, you go, you make an upside down V and then the next one is halfway up and then down from this guy. There's, there's a half. So there's got to be a half here. And then this one has a half. So there are every other halves. <laughs> so this one goes up. And I'm thinking it goes to this one. Something like that. And they keep going up. Something like that. And 
and then down here there's one here and one here so um mm -hmm. it's something like that they're scattered they're staggered uh in a very cute way okay so make your mountains any way you can um if you want to try this way you, or if you have another way just start making your mountains and as long as you're consistent i think that's all that really matters so now what we're going to do is um we go to each mountain and we just make half half circles like that and i'm just doing three in each one something like that and it's a busy one <laughs> it's a busy doodle Teresa's is back we're doing some doodling doodling around just do, do doodling around okay and the next one i kind of think they're like snails They look like snails to me. They're very consistent. They look like they're the exact same size. And they start and end the same. So I'm just going to start making a snail. Like this. And I'm going to, I'm going to begin to start this one the same way. And then if it runs into the picture, I'll skip. I'll skip her down. So I'm going to go around and around and around like that. Okay. And this was just going to go right below it. And it's the same thing. <laughs> this one just doesn't do it justice, but that's what I'm doing. And I did these. I made these. But this was back then in 2016. So that's kind of, and then I went back and I put a dot in the middle of each snail. And there's my doodle. And it made a nice border. It would have made a nice border. Okay, we got one more to do, and it's stars. And these stars are kind of in a row in the diagonal. So, and these are open stars. So, um, just to let you know, I learned this not too long ago. Um, a star, a true star... Um, doesn't is is never across. Uh, I forget what I want to try to say. Um, you know, we make a star like this, and they they're never straight across from each other. This one is not straight across from any of the stars. 
this one is not across any other star or other uh, the opposite. This one doesn't have an opposite, and this one doesn't have an opposite, um, and this one doesn't have an opposite. A true star, five stars, are perfectly planned, and they're not the you know. So if you're trying to make a make a a, a, a star this way, that's not true because these two are in alignment with each other. And the point is never across from another point. So it has to go. Uh, it can't be just straight lines. Anyway, I learned that not too long ago. It had something to do with the five star point. <laughs> Some kind of trivia. And I've lost the, the joy out of it. <laughs> You've lost me. Well, you lost what I was trying to teach you. Oh, you have to refresh. Oh, goodness, Joyce. Anyway, we're going to make a star. And it's kind of hard to make it without the center. It's kind of hard to do this. It's kind of hard to do that. And so I'm going to go ahead and do it this way. At the five star. I'm, I'm going to go ahead and make them this way. So I'm going to start out with like a border. And then I'll fill in the middle. But if I make them big enough, I'm just going to go ahead and make them traditional style. style. But I can't remember who who I saw that. I saw it on on the internet somewhere not too long ago. It had to do with the stars. So now I'm just going to fill in this one and this one. And I think it's fun afterwards. to go in with a different collar and and just randomly collar in some of the stars and and uh, not all of them but just randomly it just makes them twinkle to me and i'm still doodling so this is part of my doodle. So there's my doodle. <laughs> Stars. All righty. So that looks pretty cool. It looks pretty cool. I'll finish highlighting this house Okay, there's the doodles. Is my uh, chat not moving? Can you all see me, hear me? Okay, good, Mina. So we, we can, we're going to continue to do some doodles. I have to glue some more pictures down. Uh, but uh, I'll, I've got her book up here. I can do that. So I'm going to put these on the back.
And now we're going to go into our seahorse. We've got a seahorse to do. We're going to sketch a seahorse. Okay. Well, that, well, I just want to make sure because, hi, Kathy, because one time I was sitting here and the chat wasn't moving and then I realized nobody was there. <laughs> they, they, we lost connection. <laughs> so it's good to hear a word or two every now and then, <laughs> just every now and then, <laughs> just to let me know you're still there. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. So anyway, this is the uh, rest of my bookie here. We did this t uh, the other night, and I don't have any happy mail today, so we'll save that for another day. And I've got a few more pages left in this book, so I'll get some more doodle pages to put in. And we just might finish this book up with doodles since it's getting fluffy, and the doodles are flat. So uh, I might just do that. I'll do that tomorrow. So. Now, let's do our sketch. We're going to do our sketch. And I am going to do it in my new book in here. I'm going to use gouache. And um, I want to use my new paint. And I'll show you what we've already done. We did the Chippy Charlie. <laughs> and this is mixed media paper. And I do not know enough about watercolors, especially I've just so this page. And I'm not sure if I can watercolor on gesso. Um, so that's why I've chosen to do the watercolor paper tonight. And I can I can put I can still put the picture in the book. I can tip it in. And then we did the giraffe, Jerry giraffe. And then we did the little seahorse. So now tonight we're going to do this little turtle. And I'm going to sketch it out onto my watercolor paper. And uh, normally when you sketch, you're supposed to sketch real, real light, you know. But for camera purposes, I'm going to sketch with a heavy hand so that you can see my pencil marks. And after I get my turtle sketched, I'll take a picture of it and I'll post it online and then I'll take another picture after I paint it and it shouldn't take too much to paint because it's pretty much brown and a kind of a, a real deep reddish brown so it shouldn't take too much uh, maybe a gray a white gray and so it shouldn't take too much to color. And I might I might add a little green in there too because I think it looks pretty. <laughs> okay, okay, Kathy. Oh. <laughs> well, I'm you know, yeah, I'd love for him to try to try to draw it too. So I I'll post my sketch. So if he wants to draw, try to sketch it. And then maybe you can help him paint it. How old is he, Nicholas? He's never too young. Pick him young and train him right. <laughs> I didn't think it would, Sharon. And that's why I chose to do the, the paper. And I get to try this paper out because I haven't done it yet. <laughs> uh, and I think I've got some watercolor paper down in my cabinet down there. Uh, so I'll have to get it out too, but I got enough for tonight. So the uh, the first step in tracing this thing 
is it, it starts with a a shape almost an oval but to a point and i'm sure it's like a teardrop and um i'm going to go ahead and and do it upright uh on on here i might maybe do it tilted a little bit so i'm going to make i want to make my my turtle this big i want it on the whole you know as use as much paper as i can oh wow kathy that's great he's three well that's great oh well he would like the picture he would enjoy the picture then okay rebecca had her dinner okay kiddo i'm going to do a sea turtle now we're going to sketch it in 10 easy steps and then paint it and i'm going to use my gouache paints Mm hmm I guess I could go ahead and uh, put a little water on them and let them sit. <laughs> and I do have some clean water here. I'm going to be needing the brown for sure. And I'm I'm going to do the greens because I, I love doing putting a little bit of green in my turtles. And and I'm going to do the white. And I've contaminated my white. But that's all right. We're going to work through it. No leftovers. Woohoo! And uh, the brown. And, and I like to do a little bit of green. And maybe a tiny bit of blue. And it might just be enough blue here on my palette. There might be enough green here on my palette. So I'll just put a little bit of leftover with water on those. And that really, you don't need a whole lot when you watercolor. Um, it just, you just don't. So, uh, so anyway, I'm going to let that sit now while I draw, draw the turtle. So we start with a body. And I'm just going to wing it. And this is my body. And then on the top part, she's making uh, squiggly lines to imitate the lines in between the tiles on his back. And uh, I, I'm just going to go ahead and three, one, two, three. Okay, I'm going to try it. Um, I would probably go ahead and just make, draw the tiles first, but that's all right. She wants to do it this way. We'll do it this way. So I'm going to try to imitate what she has. I'm going to have more tiles. I'm going to have an extra tile. And then down here on the bottom, it's the same thing. I'm going to have to draw my tiles because uh, it just makes more sense to me. If I go ahead and do it. Because I, I know there has to be a little bit of space. And then on top, I just don't care for the way they're doing it. Anyway, I got the towels. Okay. And then there's some little ones on the end. And we will go...
This is not my favorite tiles. I've, I've done better than this. That's just the way our turtle's going to have to be. Okay. Oh, I think she's traveling from chair to chair, Kathy. <laughs> She she moves from the kitchen table to the green chair and then she goes to the green uh -huh. chair to the couch before it's over. Just saying. <laughs> Nothing bad. It's all good. <laughs> yeah. Don't forget to take your phone. Yeah. Don't lose the remote. Okay. Well, anyway, now the next thing she puts on is the fins. And the fins are just kind of like a wing. And then on the bottom, there's all these little uh, fin parts. And then the fin on the other leg over here is just barely touch, uh, showing. What, Nora? She's crying. She wants to go out. And then the back fins, the back legs, she, she, she just has one leg on the back. And it's about right down here. And it's a big fat one with some uh, fins on it. Something like that. And I think this is the end of the turtle shell. So then we have the head of the turtle. And it just looks like, like this. Kid you not. And there's a, a straight mouth. But I have this thing about straight mouths. And I like to give it a little curve. <laughs> it gives him a little smile. <laughs> so we're going to put the eye in. And the eye has layers around the eye. Layers around the eye. And then, um, uh, then around on the head and around on the fins, he's got uh, freckles. What I call freckles. And they're all different shape and sizes. And. And around on his face. And they're on his fins as well. And we're going to continue to make these little freckles. I'm calling them freckles. Beauty marks on his fins, his legs. Okay. And uh, there is even a few over on this one. And on the back. And they're random. Random, random, random. Okay. And I think that's it. Got the turtle, got the head, we got the turtle. Okay, so that's it. So I, I hope that that's dark enough that you all can sort of see what I did. And very simple. Now she does have a shadow 
of the torso of the belly down here and it's just that much and there are some underbelly markings and i have to get my white eraser out and just erase that little bit i can make his leg a little bit bigger love my white eraser so there's like an underbelly here and and these um are on his belly too and they're a little bit blonder on the belly they're a little bit blonder so when i when i go to do those i will make those these will be darker and these will be lighter so that's kind of it that's kind of it i think i'll make this edge a little sharper and darker with my paint and um I'm not real happy with the back, but that's just the way it is this time. So, uh, <laughs> okay, so uh, I'm just going to go ahead and get into the painting part of it. And I will probably do, I'm going to go ahead and do the background first. And um, I'm just going to um, wet the back with the page. Now this paper is all waxed up on the edges. And that's so that the next page won't get contaminated with my water. So I can pretty much go to the edge and... Uh, it won't hurt my paper underneath. So you don't have to have a protection page like I do in the mixed media page uh, pages that I do. So I'm just going around the, around our turtle. And, uh, and I'm going to put in a little bit of blue, uh, some kind of blue in here. Let me get a little bit more water. Yeah, he looks like he's swimming up. He's swimming. He's coming up for air. Yeah, they have to come up for air. And and I'm going to be, um, I'm going to try to do swirls or something to indicate that there's waves, uh, some kind of a swishiness going on uh, as I paint. And I don't really care if I get to the edge or not. Uh, that's not going to be important really to me right now. But I just want to get around him. And we have to come up with a name. You guys get to name this little guy. Little Freddy. So, uh, just pastels here, really pastel. And I think I'm going to maybe, since there's so many pictures in here that we want to paint them all, you know, uh, I know that we don't have to paint the ones that we've already painted, like the bears and the elephants and stuff like that, unless we want to. But I'm also thinking about maybe sketching uh, an extra Uh, like if we did this tonight, I would already have some other small one sketched up. Uh, 
<laughs> his name is Crush from Nemo. Hi, nobody. Miss Nobody Owens. <laughs> Welcome. Welcome. We are we are watercoloring with gouache. And this is my second time, I think, using using gouache. So it's new to me. Now this blue over here in the dish had just a tiny bit of purple in it. And I like it. I like it. So it gives it that um, watery depth looking something other. Uh huh. So uh, there we go. He's coming up for air. Okay, now I'm going to go ahead and start on the turtle. That's all right. I like it. I like it a lot. Okay, we can name him Crush. <laughs> so we do lots of different kinds of mixed media, Owens, Mrs. Owens. So uh, tonight we're 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 sketching this, and earlier tonight we we played uh, with a we played a game. And it was a uh, drawing game with the, with the dice. So now I'm going to go ahead and get my other little brush. And I'm going to get into my brown. And uh, I'm going to... I think I'll do the, the light color first and do the brown second. And I'm going to go into my white, and it's already got a little bit of yellow on it, so it's going to make it a uh, an off white. And I'm going to paint. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and paint all of my turtle with this color, and this will be the grit, <laughs> the grit between this the the spots of the tortoise tortoise shell. And I'm sure there's a name, proper names for it, but I don't know what they are. And I'm just going to go ahead and paint this uh, this uh, off-white all over. And then I can go back and do his spots. And uh, this will be in the background already. So I have reasons behind my madness. I have reasons for my madness. Okay, I'm going to have to let let the uh, the dogs out. They're getting restless, and I think they want to go out. I had them out, and then Joe let them in. <laughs> so, just a moment, please. Duty calls.
I'm okay. So, fixed me a little beverage on the way. It's getting thirsty. <laughs> the dogs are busting out. There you go. <laughs> All right, so I like that, and the same thing on the fins, I'm going to do the same thing, but I'm going to tint, this is a white on my, in my gouache tray, and I must have got some yellow in it, because it looks like it's an off-white now, <laughs> So, I think I got most of it out just now. So, now on the fins, I got a little bit of green and a little bit of uh, yellow here in this corner. And I'm going to add a lot of white to it and tint my white in the green. Give it a greenish tinge. And I'm going to paint this on the fins and uh, then when I do the spots on the fins this this green tinge will accent I love blending colors and I love creating that blend and I'm going to go ahead and do his head in this little yellowy green white and I'm just going to do the whole thing and then I'm going to come back with the uh, the browns to do his freckles what I'm calling freckles so he's a little green around the gill right now but but they do have a lot of green on them where they swim in the ocean and I'm going to go ahead and do his underbelly in this same green it's a real real sweet now the kitty cat's crying I can't win for losing tonight I'm telling you come here kitty 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 come here So, uh, so anyway, there's my turtle. So now I need to go in with the brown. Now that I got all that done. It's not going to take too much longer. Um, I'm going to go ahead and... Uh, I think the brown's going to be for all of the spots. So let's see how we work it. Let's see how we can do it. Um, I'm just going to go ahead and get some of it out onto my tray here. And then I'm going to water it down just a little bit more. And I think that's how you're supposed to do it <laughs> with the gouache. I think you uh, water it down. I need to probably watch some videos. <laughs> yeah, it's a kitty's turn. That's right, Joyce. It's kitty's turn. Okay. So now, if I hold my mouth right, I can do the spots on the turtle. It's all very watery. That's better. The, uh, the gouache paints are more opaque. Uh, is the description from what I've read. Then the watercolors are more translucent. And uh, this paint is more condensed. And it, uh, it covers... 
a lot more than what the watercolors do. And it's almost like painting with acrylic in a, in a sense. So I'm just kind of making some of this stuff up as I go. <laughs> Since I didn't really draw it right. I could have erased it and moved on. But this will this will work. This will work. It'll be fine. So I'm thinking I'm doing it okay. I think I'm doing it the right way. <laughs> I'm painting. Doesn't matter as long as I get some stuff, get some color down. Well, come here. I know what's wrong. Joe is so funny with the cat. He uh, he thinks he thinks he can speak cat, and he'll go come come meow come meow come here meow. He talks like that to the cat. It's cute. <laughs> it is. Well, come here. You're almost back here. You're almost back here. There's no doggies. You better come on. There's no doggies. I know it. I really feel sorry for her because she did have a brother and he's been gone a couple of years and I really think she's lonely. I would be. So uh, we got another dog instead of another cat. And we thought Nora was a good uh fix for 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 abby because abby's 11 years old she's going to be 12 and we thought that another dog would perk her up so all right there's that And I was telling you a minute ago, I think I need to probably watch a couple of uh, painters. I could I could get some insight on gouache painting, painting with gouache. I think I need to probably watch instead of uh, winging it. <laughs> I'm winging it tonight. And uh, I think that would probably be good for me to do that. So I need to do that when I have time. Kitty, 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 kitty. So, how am I doing? Yeah. I think she's lonely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, there are other cats outside. There are neighbor kitties that come around. And so, she does see other cats. And Joe let the dogs back in. <sighs> oh. 
Okay, so this won't take too much longer. i am got all the little dots to do yet, but I'll get them. Okay. So I'm quiet and I'm I'm concentrating here. Got two more brown ones to do, then I got all the little ones. And I'm hoping I can do them in little quickies. We'll see. Hi, Joe. It's a turtle. It's a sea turtle. Sea turtle. It's a little green around the gills. Oh. So mm -hmm. anyway, uh, <laughs> I just let the dogs out. Oh, did you? Yeah. So they come straight to me. Yeah. Did you go pee pee? Huh? So there we go with the turtle. I like the way I did that. Now I'm going to try to do these little uh, freckles. I'm going to do the freckles now. And I think I will be able to. He's loving on Abby. Getting some Abby love. You can't pick Nora up. She's so heavy. And, you, you know, she loves for you to pet her and rub on her ears and stuff. But if you try to put your arm around Nora, she runs. She will not allow you to hug her. You cannot hug her. I have to sneak him. You have to be careful. She'll claw you. Yeah, she's got strong claws. I need to trim her claws. We've talked about it, but I haven't done it. Okay, I'm almost done with this one. And I will go over the edge. Okay. 
I love my new brush. This new brush is very, 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 very nice. I can really do a lot with it. So, what have you been doing, Joe? Oh, I've um, been out there sorting. Sorting? Uh huh. Mm hmm. When you got more than one or two, you sort them. Okay. And. Kenny called. Of course, I think I went out there and Jesse was talking to Jesse and these poor people. <laughs> Joe talks more on the phone than anybody I have ever known in my entire life. He talks on the phone all day. He takes it with him. He just he so comes. Sometimes I don't take it with me. He's, he comes with the phone and he's talking to someone when he's coming in and when he's leaving, he's got somebody on the phone that he's talking to when he leaves. <sighs> that's not true. But that, that is. It is true. It is true. But that's okay. He's just a popular kind of guy. Everybody wants to talk to him. I do too. So anyway, uh, we're going to name him Crush. Is that his name? Crush? Crush. Crush is the name of a turtle in Finding Nemo. Oh, gosh. He was a surfing dude, wasn't he? He surfed in the, in, the, in the current. That's who it was. Yeah. Crush. And the little guys wanted to be just like Crush. Dude. Oh, cool. Miss Holly Berry, the cat, went outside. She's outside now. I let her out. That's what so, she was wanting. Yeah, I let her out when I come in. She was wanting out. Hi, Cheryl, John, <laughs> Miss Mary Berry. Is Cheryl on the couch yet? She'll be heading to the couch pretty soon here. Miss Teresa. Katie's World is watching. Kathy. Mm -hmm. Oh, Kathy, okay. Your buddy. Yeah, they they uh, pretty soon they start making you turn the lights down and over on ocean front. Yeah, when it's turtle season, you're not supposed to have any lights going out to sea, head uh, towards the sea, because if the turtles see it, they uh, they think it's the sun or something. It 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 it. it gears them off the, their coast what they're trying to do something about the turtles well they don't want them to stray from their their natural their habitat yeah, yeah the, the water because they swim to the sun and the lights uh offshore lead them astray Something. Dude. Dude. Cool, man. And Barbara Moore. Well, hi, Barbara. I didn't even see her name. Hi, honey. We're painting the surfing turtle. I 
They've got some 80 year old turtles down there at the um, little outside. It's not a marina. It's the the. Um, it's not over in Lando. It's just a small. Uh, what would you call that? A, a zoo. A zoo. <laughs> it's a little uh, mom and pops zoo. He just has two or three kind of animals. Yeah. And he he keeps them, and then you can go in and pay to see your animals. But you can you can walk right up on them. They let you inside them, inside the uh, the boundaries. It's fenced in and everything, but. Yeah, it's not real real expensive or anything. But really reasonable. I don't know if they're I haven't heard if they're opened yet, but some of the other uh activities are opened up. But I haven't heard anything about that. Okay. Any any critiquing? Anybody have any critiquing? Let's see. Okay, I can't think of anything else. I might do some more seaweed in the in the water. <clears throat> I think I need to do some seaweed. What about another a right leg flipper? That is his right flipper. Oh. It's backwards over on your side. Um, I did have another one underneath. That's what I was saying. Um, I can put that in, yeah. Just a little short one. Yeah. Well, both of the dogs are crashing, passed out. Okay. Be good, I promise. Oh, <laughs> I promise. He's three.
we got turtles that are big enough that they won't fit in a five gallon bucket on our road up at the we got a pond on our road we got two three ponds that's pretty good size About three weeks ago, they had uh, two or three ducks. They had uh, some ducks come in and sit it, sit in, and because a lot of the water around here is uh, dried up a little bit, we haven't had any rain except two days all year so far. Okay, we'll quit. How's that? Is that enough? Mm hmm. Yeah, catfish bigger than boats wagons. <laughs> okay. And I like I like to do I like it to be different and I'm going to go into my darkest red and just get a little bit on the tip of my brush. And just Barely go over his lips to give him some pink pinkness in his mouth, like that. And you probably can't tell, but I can. <laughs> and I think that this is a dark, dark. Blackish color. Give him a pupil. So, what do y'all think? Okay, I think I'm going to quit then. June the 2nd. Can you believe it? There he is. Crush. Okay. Now, it's just a quarter till 10. So, we have time to do maybe a napkin journal. Thanks, guys. And, oh, I want to show you how this comes out of the book, too. I demoed it a little bit the other day. Um, but... Um, of course, people who do watercolors know what to do. <laughs> and I'm so green. I'm really green at it. He looks pretty cool. So you take your palette knife and they, they didn't um, uh, they didn't wax this part. So you can take your palette knife and go up underneath your paper and, and scoot it off and scoot this page off so you you're you're really slicing it and I swear this paper is really thick so it's really good so I'm going to just go around the edge with my palette knife and tear this page off just like that and the uh, the next one is still waxed down or glued down or whatever it is. Like that. So there's nothing on this next piece. Clean as a whistle. Whew. So this one I'm going to go ahead and I can put it in my other book. So anyway, I think what I'm going to, oh, we get to pick out another, 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 another one. We get to pick out another one. Let's 
So this one will go in here. Just like that. And I'm not, you know, I'm not going to frame it or anything. So I'm just going to put a little glue down. <laughs> Good night, Kathy. Kathy. Bye, honey. So, um, yeah. And uh, that's what I'm going to do. There it is, buddy. There it goes. There he is. And I'll, I'll leave it open because uh, he's a little wet, still a little wet. So, um, yeah, maybe we can do a, I'll put him over here to dry. Let's pick out another, another one. So, um, uh, the only thing I know to do is to thumb through and let you all see pictures there's a penguin, an octopus, a polar bear, a jellyfish, and a blue tang fish, uh, a dolphin, a walrus, a hammerhead, and we got some more woodlands, some woodland animals. We've got a fox. There's a bee and a snail, a deer, a frog, a wolf, a raccoon, a squirrel, a red squirrel, <laughs> an octopus. That'll stretch you. <laughs> you think that'll stretch me? I'll do the octopus. And a fox. Okay. Well, what I'll do is, um, <clears throat> I think I'm going to do two at a time from here on out. And I'll do the fox with you online. But I'll go ahead and and sketch the, the octopus out because it's, he, you know, it's kind of... It's all squirrely, squiggies, squigglies, you know. So I can go ahead and sketch him out, and then when I paint the fox, I can I'll just paint him at the same time. Okay, so we'll do the fox and the octopus for Thursday. Yep, yep, yep. So uh, that's what my plans are. What I'm going to try for it we'll try it and that way i think i'll be i'll be able to um push a couple of more of these out and we've done a lot of these animals already because we've done the polar bear you know in the other in the other paintings but that doesn't mean we can't sketch it you know here too so that's what we'll do or that's what I will, will try to do. So uh, we'll work on that. We did our Picasso. We could do a napkin journal page. And I did have, actually, we did have a, a journal page. I've got some things out to do on a journal page here that I had laid out that I can still do use. See what we got. Let's see what we got. Oh, got a real pretty napkin here. And it's like one of those old timey. Uh, this is probably an antique napkin. I got it at the flea market, and it's the whole it's the whole scenery. Uh, it's got really two sceneries going on. 
and uh, and my grandfather, <clears throat> after he retired <clears throat> from the the paint factory, he bought him a little paint store up in Lewisburg, West Virginia, and it was called John's Paint Store, and he sold paint and. He also had wallpaper books up front. And as a little girl, I'd always go up there and thumb through the wallpaper books for hours while waiting for him to finish <laughs> what he was going to do. Because usually like on Saturdays, I think he worked a half a day and um, and he he would mix paint and get things ready, for, you know, for Monday and stuff. So um, uh, so I remember a lot of murals my grandmother had a mural on one of her walls in the dining room and it was a wallpaper mural so uh, and then I can remember going out to restaurants and it was the kind of restaurants that had white linen <laughs> and they would have murals wallpaper murals on their walls and of course I think my grandfather sold them the wallpaper and um, uh so, so this kind of reminds me of that. Will, Na Mary, um, this is just called mixed media. And you don't have to use napkins. Um, uh, but you might want to pick up some, uh, you know, glue the next time you go to the Dollar Tree or something. And you can use magazines and any kind of clippings. And as a matter of fact, I have a box of clippings that I just clipped in the bedroom. But um, but you can use napkins for backgrounds. And um, and I was going to glue this one down. And but you have to take the back off of it, or it won't it won't stay. It, the back part will glue down, but the top part won't. It'll come off. So uh, we take the backs off of our napkins. But, um, and most of the napkins have two, two uh, backings. This one has two. This is one of them. And I recycle the backings. I don't throw them away. I use them. So there's another piece of white on here. You just have to find the end and very gently uh, feather it apart. And sometimes you can you can just do a little piece of tape or uh, wet your fingers and pull them apart that way. I like to do that. I do that all the time. And voila. You just take your time in doing it, and there you go. Then you can just, but you have to be real careful when you glue these down because they're fragile. So I like to use uh, a thin set glue, and um, uh, this this here is a thin set, and this is a matte acrylic gel. Uh, by Vicki Bowden and uh, I've had it a long time I don't it, it was a gift to me so I have no idea where it came from but it's like butter it is so smooth it's smoother than the liquid glue and it's smoother than Mod Podge and it's it's just smoother than any of your tacky glues and you don't need a real heavy glue for this because um, it's a napkin, you know, it, it's not going to take a whole lot to uh, glue it down. So anyway, the way I like to glue my napkins down is I like to place it down where I want it. And then I put my hand, my left hand down and I push it down real hard so I don't lose my spot. And then I fold this back and I glue this side down. And I squirt some of this butter out. And it is. It's like butter. And I get me a nice big brush. You can use a fan brush if you want or anything. But this is one of my brushes. 
and I I smooth this uh, thin coat, this thin mat out just real evenly on this side of the page. And then I flip this back and it's right where it needs to be, right where I wanted it to be. And uh, so then I can take this side and fold it back and just barely pull back a little bit to where I was, where I had the glue. And I put a little bit more glue over on this side. And I've glued my napkin down without having the, <laughs> it flying all over the place. And it can, it can fly, it can fly every which way if you're not careful. So I put a little bit more glue down over here. And then I fold this back. And my napkin is perfectly placed on my page. Then I just, I, I take my scissors and then I trim the backing off from the other side. And it's real easy to do it, do it when you do it this way. For me, it's easy. And you can do this with a, a little bit of water on a tiny paintbrush as well and tear it apart and it'll feather off. But I'm just going to use my scissors right now. And I'm just going to trim up the side of my paper like that. Real straight and neat. Okay, Becky. Hi, honey. See you later. See you tomorrow. Becky will be on tomorrow. What time are you coming on tomorrow? Do you know? She does cute, cute things in her streams. So now... Now I have a napkin page to do some art with. And this will go in my leftover box. And I could put it over here and do something creative in this corner. So I think I will. Um, what I want to do is put a little bit of paint down. And this is a, I guess it's a turquoisey blue. But I think I'm going to mix it with some white. Uh, I'm going to put some of this down, but I want to mix it with white too. So I'll get my brush back out. And I'm going to paint this corner of my book. One of the things I love to do for those of you that just are new tonight, um, I love to just take two or three items and make a page out of it. And, and it's, it's fun to do uh, just to see what you can come up with with what you have. It is. It's fun. So I'm going to take some more of this butter. But, and I'm going to glue some of this napkin down over here. Right here. I think that'll get it. 
I'm going to have to guesstimate. <laughs> Guestimating. Okay. And then a little bit more here. But I found these napkins at a um, flea market several years ago, and I have really enjoyed them. They're vintage. Vintage. Okay, and I'm just going to put this right there. Now I've laid it right on top of the paint, so I'm going to put a little bit of glue on top, make sure it gets down there. And I'll take a, I've got a fan brush over here. I do. And I know it's looking at me. Right there it is. <laughs> I've got a, a nice fan brush. It's really a good one though. I've used it a lot. And I'm just gently going over top of my napkin. If you don't if you use anything heavier, it will tear. So it's best to go with a light touch. light touch okay now let's see what we can do thank you Cheryl Cheryl's Cheryl's on top of things tonight so Becky uh, will be on tomorrow night at 7 o'clock Eastern if you want to see Aunt Beck's creations it'll be worth it go in <laughs> Everybody join in. So um, let me go get my my snippet box that I was in the bedroom cutting up today and see what I can find in it. I was at work and this morning watching TV and and playing with my shoe box here see what we can find in here hmm. got some flowers Could make a Victorian lady. Wonder if I can find parts. Parts. I need parts. I've got some women over here. She almost fits there. I think that'll work. Let's make her a Victorian. She's awful pretty though. But she fits into the dress. I'll have to trim her hands. Hi, Lala. How you doing?
Anyway, what I'm doing is mixed media. <laughs> For those of you who are wondering, what in the world is she doing? And you, uh, you just play with your magazines and your pictures and the things that you have. And you make things. And uh, as you can see... I can make something out of this little girl. By uh, trimming her dress off <laughs> and adding her a new dress. Yeah, that's what I'm doing. That's what I'm talking about. That's what I'm talking about. We can lay her down here. And we can put a dress on her. And we can put her hands <laughs> on top of her dress. Like that. Perfect. Couldn't have planned that any better if I tried. Just saying. <laughs> I think that's pretty cool right there. I don't care what you say. And I got this paper. Looks like a letter writing. Fashion. Yep, that's what we're doing. ahead and glue her down right there. Let's get the brush out here. Let's try this. There we go. This was a, um, a paper pad shaped like a dress. And um, and I, I used it up, and I still had the, the front cover of it, and that's why I wanted to use it. So there. And I do have some other regular glue here. Did you want me? Um, will you bring me my plug-in? To your plug? Was mm -hmm. it in here? It's by my bed, yeah. Uh -huh. 
So I'll put these little f flowers up here. She's getting, she's waiting for the coach to come by to pick her up, take her to the ball. Take her to the ball. Thank you, dear. I just came on. It's getting ready to go off. <laughs> oh, I need the plug in. The oh, plug. The plug. The plug, plug. Well, here, you can plug it in there. Oh, okay. My battery's going down. It's going down. Got it. 